So let's look at an example where we want to determine the direction of flow when we have groundwater. So for this example, we have a FE type question where we have four monitoring wells. So these wells are typically installed to determine the direction of flow. And these wells are A, B, C, and D. And they're shown by the map below. Here's our map. Well A, well B, C, and D. The well's head elevations and depth to the groundwater table is given by the table here. So we have a table and we have well A, B, C, and D. We're given the well head elevations and the depth to the groundwater table. So we know the groundwater flows in which direction from point A. So where's point A? Let's highlight that. It's going to be here. So what we want to determine, in which direction are we flowing with respect to this orientation? So north is up, west left, east right, down is south, right? So we want to know, are we going north? Are we going this way, this way? Where is this groundwater going to flow? In which direction? So we're given these choices, and the approach that we should use here is we have to understand two things. So I write down the first thing is that we know that the velocity is going to flow normal to the lines of constant piezometric head. These are also called our equal potential lines, right? Equal potential. It has equal potential. So it's constant piezometric head. So let's write that down. The velocity will flow to lines of constant piezometric head so we have that so that's the first thing we have to know this is we know it's gonna be normal or perpendicular so it's gonna be the velocity will flow so I forgot normal here so it's going to be it's going to flow normal two lines right of constant piezometric head the key word here is going to be normal perpendicular to these lines so that's the first thing the second thing is that we know that the velocity vector is going to be in the direction of decreasing head so let's write that down decreasing head and this is the direction that the velocity vector will take, right? So velocity vector is going to be, is in the direction of decreasing head. So those are two important concepts we have to understand. So applying these two, one and two, where are we flowing? So we know, let's first look and try to determine a line that has constant piezometric head, which is our equal potential line. So the equal potential line, in this case, if we look at our data here, let's write down the elevations. We know I'm going to focus on the depth to the groundwater table, the data we're given for that. So for A, it's 25 feet. For B, it's going to be 20 feet. For C, it's 20 feet. And for D, it's going to be 30 feet. So obviously here, the line of constant piezometric head, so it's going to be the 20 feet and the 20 feet. These share the same depth to the groundwater. And they also share the same wellhead elevation. So what we do here is just connect these lines by an equal potential line. So that's our equal potential line there. And we know that since what we have here, we know this is 20, this is 20. So what's going to happen here, we know this is 25. We're going to have 24 here. We have, so this is 24 this will be 23 this is going to be 21 then we hit 20 right so same thing here we have 24 23 21 
and what you have to do here is connect these 24 23 21 so we can continue drawing these lines to the right side here and we know we're gonna have something like this so these are our equal potential lines and we know this is the direction that the velocity vector is going to go to so it's going to be normal to these equal potential lines but now let's look at the second part is the velocity vector is in the direction of decreasing head so where's the head going to decrease so we know we have the 25 feet here this is 30 feet right so this is the depth to the groundwater so we know we have 25 feet 30 feet here and this is going to be the direction of decreasing head so if we look at the wellhead elevations, if we compare A to D, A's here, D's here, we know we are higher at A than we are at D. So this means our water table at A is going to be greater than that it is at D. And specifically, I want to just make, make sure that you understand this. If I draw a side view, we have a well here at A. And let's say it's uh, some depth down here. What's the depth? I'm going to use the, let's use these data sets. So for A, it's 25 feet. So this depth to the bottom here is 25 feet. So now let's look at D. Obviously, you want to focus on D because that's going to be the greatest, right? It's 30 feet. And if you look at the wellhead elevation, D is going to be the lowest point. So it's going to be 205. It's obviously, it's obviously going to go from A to D. So based on the side view, let's go to D. D's here. And we know D, let's focus on the depth to the groundwater. It's 30 feet, right? So what this happens, what happens here is we know we're all the way down here. So it's going to be 30 feet. 30 feet. So what we can do here is we know our groundwater will do something like this. See how the water table is decreasing? So this is our water table and we know the flow is going to go this way, right? Our velocity vectors. It's going to go from A to D because our water table is going down. And we also know that based on a reference point at the bottom, we know that what we're given here for the wellhead elevations is 210 for the A. So this is go going to be 210. 210 feet. And for D, it's going to be what? The 205 feet. So it's obviously going to be less than the 210. So it's going to be 205 feet. And that's what we mean there when we're looking at a side view of, of these wells. So what's going to happen is we know the velocity vector is going to be perpendicular to this line and it would go this way so here's our velocity vector and what direction is this it's obviously going to be north east right so it's north east so it should be b so that's all for this one take care and please subscribe and like